Welcome to the Brand Theory Podcast, the podcast for helping you uncover your passion, realize your purpose, and take the aligned action. Together, we're going to prove the theory that when we live our lives on brand, the possibilities become limitless. I'm your host, Danielle Marchesi, branding expert and business coach. Let's get started. Well, welcome back to the Brand Theory Podcast. Today, we are talking to a very special guest, Kelly Desario, beauty entrepreneur and owner of Real Style Beauty. She was a client turned friend, now one of my favorite female entrepreneurs to have by my side in this up and down industry, a fellow Jersey girl, and my hot hair stylist. Welcome to the show, Kelly. Thank you. I'm so excited to have you guys. Kelly, I feel like we bonded over the Jersey thing because I remember walking in, having our first meeting about her branding style, and she she said she probably cursed, and I was like, yeah, we can hang. <laughs> I, you know what? Some people tell me that I don't curse. Like, I've never heard you curse. And then other people know me as, like, a, a Italian Jersey mouth. I think it just comes out in conversation, the, the Italian yeah, jersey. And, yeah, but I loved it. So anyway, um, welcome to the podcast. We are going to be talking all about Kelly's kind of story a little bit and how we met. And the, we're going to tell a story about how she helped me come back on brand once and how maybe she has in the, her past gotten off her brand a little bit and navigated her way back. But first and foremost, Kelly, can you tell us who Real Style Beauty is, who you are as a brand, and let us know who it is that you are as a brand? Okay, so it, it's always hard for me to like get to the point of things <laughs> because I'm so involved and I'm like long-winded. It's an Aquarius thing. But Real Style Beauty is a multiple revenue stream business that flows like a movie reel. So there's different scenes, different contributors, and it's full of plot twists. I love that. <laughs> it's like the best way that I could, you know, it's, it sounds general, but mm -hmm. it really is what it is. You know, there's so many avenues of what I do and aspects of each area of business that I'm, that I have under one brand. Right. So to be clear, you are a hairstylist, but you also do all these other things under this umbrella of being a beauty entrepreneur. Can you just tell us a little bit about what that is under that umbrella? So, yeah. So it's really, I feel like even coming into this time of the pandemic, I, what I know about myself is that I love hair mm -hmm. and I love people. And what I love most is to make people love their hair and to love themselves. So as much as I am a hairdresser, I am an entrepreneur and I find it really, um, really calming and strong for me to feel like I'm a service provider. Like I don't just prover provide services, but I am of service mm -hmm. to women and their families and like on the roller coaster of life, highs and lows. Yeah, absolutely. And do you feel like it took you a while to figure that out? Like, do you, like, we didn't start as a hairdresser knowing right away, like, this is my mission. Like, this is, I'm here to help. I'm here to serve. When do you feel like that kind of clicked for you? Um, I knew I wanted to do something with the whole package after I graduated from FIT. Mm -hmm. um, I, I went for uh, fashion design. So I really wanted to focus on designing evening wear. And which the education elevated my hairdressing because hair is so much like fabric. But I felt like I was really into the whole package of transforming a woman and then or inspiring a woman by an overall presence and overall look. Mm -hmm. And I think over time, it's I realized that it's like innate in me to want to serve and to like take care of other people and make other people feel good because I have more optimism than I can even hold <laughs> Absolutely. I love that. And Kelly is a very optimistic person. Guys, can I tell the car story? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So in, in the theme of keeping it real, Kelly is very optimistic and calm, cool, and collected. When we were on our way to an event in New York City when we were working together, she had to get stuff from inside the studio. We were packing up her car and she locked her keys inside the studio, but very calmly. She's like, okay, okay, we got this. We just like transferred to my car. We started going. It was just very like, there was no, 
shit, this isn't going to happen. Or what did we do? There was no panic. She was just optimistic about, yep, this is what it is. This is just my life. It's just keeping it real. Let's move on. Let's roll. Let's go. And that's how it was. And that's kind of how that whole day went as well. Kelly, was this something you always knew you wanted to do? Can we, I just find when I was first starting my business or even at any point in my business, I always loved hearing people's backstories a little bit. So can you tell us a little bit about kind of how you even started in the first place? So again, going back to my time, like early on when I was a teenager from when I started beauty school to then when I was in my early twenties when I was finishing college, um, you know, getting that, that beauty license and then getting my degree in fashion design. I just knew my life and my work was like a, a reel of talents, right? Like I kept mm-hmm. thinking about like, what am I going to do? I'm, I, I felt all over the place. Mm-hmm. And I still get like that sometimes because I really am blessed with talent and great people around me and so many opportunities that you really have to focus on it. Um, so I think that's when I was like, that's when I named my business Real Real Style, and it's R E E L. It's my real life. It's you know that that picture, that movie reel, and those slides of you know highs and lows and service and uh, fashion and all these things that I really didn't want to compromise or give one up. Um, and I kind of before I even was self aware or knew that what I was doing, I was allowing myself allowance to Mm -hmm. figure out where I wanted to go and let that real spin and just, you know, evolve as I saw fit. And that's what it's really been. Yeah. And you used to, I think I remember you telling me when you were a teenager, you used to cut your brother's hair and you just kind of cut hair just because you, it was just something you felt you had to do. Yeah. Yeah, from the time I was 12, I was like hustling my friends, like, let me cut your hair. Like I, as if I knew what I was doing. I love I that. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like when we're when we feel aligned with that purpose and that passion, even if we don't actually recognize that that's what it is, we just have to do it. We just have to kind of just go with the flow and just kind of see where it takes us. Yeah, and I still have like my my closest friends laugh now because we think about when I was like buying stuff from the drugstore and like convincing them that like, I knew what I was doing and it was going to be so cool. And most of the time, it was. Sometimes we were back at the drugstore a little while later, but <laughs> it was about creation. It was about yeah. making feel good and inspired. And I like, I had that in me before I even knew what it was. Yeah. I love that. It just means you're supposed to be doing what you're doing. Yeah. Keeping it real. Keeping it real. Always. <laughs> um, okay. So going back to the whole brand aspect. Was there a time, and I know we worked a lot on your brand strategy, we ended up doing a heck of a lot more, but was there a time in your business, in your life, where you felt like you got off of your mission, you got off of your brand, and kind of how did you navigate your way back? So I think it's like a constant check-in for me, um, because because my business is so vast and I have real style beauty, you know, at seven salon and the salon experience and then my bridal experience and the exchange aspect, which is, um, you know, professional mentorship and all the ambassador work that I do for Ted Gibson and starring with fashion week and all those things. Like it's a lot. Mm -hmm. So to, to stay on brand for me is to be myself and to be true to myself and to do what I love and remember that it's a business Mm -hmm. and I have to have boundaries. Um, And I actually think think you're pretty good at your boundaries. Like you, so Kelly and I were working together. I do. Cause here, I'm going to tell you why. So when Kelly and I were working together, we basically were elevating her brand in the online space a little bit. We were doing a lot of work on Instagram and we were doing a lot of work on her website and just, just, transitioning things and I would ask you to do things on your Instagram or ask you to do stories and you would you would do it you would give it a try but then you would come back and say like hey that actually doesn't feel like me and I actually want to do it this way so I feel like in terms of boundaries you're you're good at trying and giving a little but still staying true and real to yourself yeah because I'm a people pleaser so Mm -hmm. when work with somebody I like that accountability Mm -hmm. and I try it and then but then I then I love to learn and say okay well this was great but this is what's really best 
for me and what mm-hmm. feels good. And I think that, you know, now, even through this time with like those check-ins of, is this right for me? Am I spending my time well? Um, the question really is at this point in my life that I have to keep going back to about that brand, staying on brand and staying on target is, does this add to the quality of my life and my family mm-hmm. or does it add stress to my life and my family? Mm-hmm. Because just because I can do something doesn't mean I should. Yeah. And I'm blessed to say at 35, like I feel confident to say I can do almost anything. Yeah. That doesn't mean I have to or I should because then my overall life doesn't thrive because I get overwhelmed. Right, right. Sometimes I forget that you're only 35. Not that I think you're older, but it's like you've accomplished so much (laughs) already. You definitely are. I feel like that's another reason I connect a little bit with you so well is I feel like I'm an old soul as well. Yes, you are. Um, okay, so Kelly's pretty humble, but she's a pretty big deal. She is very well known in her inside her industry. She's worked with some pretty big names. She has was a stylist on TLC, so yes to the dress America. So you can see her on an episode or so in that show. And she works with some pretty big deals, like I said, in her industry. When I was working with her, she took me on a job at the Plaza Hotel with a very high name designer. And so she's a big deal, guys. I'm like, I'm blowing smoke up her ass a little bit, but she's a pretty big deal. So in terms of saying on brand and and what she was saying, I feel like you get pulled in a lot of different directions and you get offered a lot of things and jobs, but how do you really, and is it a matter of just making sure you are doing those check-ins with yourself, but how do you kind of stay humble and say like driven to, to focus on what you want to do, your goals, but also that people pleasing thing. Is it a matter of a check-in? Do you have like a method that you use? So I think it's a constant check-in and what I've learned is For an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. and a creative, I think that rest is actually something that we have to work at because there's always something else that we can do or an idea that we have or an opportunity that somebody presents that makes you think of, okay, maybe I won't do that, but it, it brings me to this idea for myself. And I think that through this whole the end of last year, moving into this year, I've had this like cycle of seven going on in my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the number seven stands for rest. So I think it's been like really symbolic for me because to rest in where you are is to be confident in who you are. Mm -hmm. And then you have the time where you're sitting still and just in the moment to say, that was great. And I want to do this or I don't want to do that. And I think that as entrepreneurs and creatives, we don't practice as much self care in ways as we offer other people. Mm. Um, in my profession anyway, you know, we're, we're, we're always giving or coaching or servicing. Yeah. So I, that, that boundary of having rest to evaluate and reflect and just do something that feeds you on the complete opposite side of your profession is what's important for constant reset. Hmm. Constant reset. And I feel like constant growth too, because when you allow yourself that rest, you can, like you say, evaluate and it allows you to refocus and grow at an even higher level. I think it's like an arrow, right? Mm -hmm. Basic um analogies you know for an arrow when you're shooting a bow and arrow you have to pull that arrow back and hold it before it propels forward absolutely i think it's it's you know it's corny or you know people have said it before but it really is true when you can be calm and humble and thankful for whatever you've already done mm-hmm. it allows you to enjoy that to then propel into what's next instead of just running all the time yeah wow genius that was (laughs) awesome (laughs) I love that and when you were talking about rest it reminded me of this story that I want to tell and I don't think I've actually ever told you this but when this whole thing with the pandemic started I was living in Georgia I still live there but I came up to Jersey when it had hit 
hardcore in Jersey. And I felt like I walked into a madhouse. Like my family was going a little crazy and we had a lot going on and we had a lot of healthcare workers and all of that. So, uh, and just the stores in general were closed. So it was, it was hard for me to go from a place that wasn't so nervous about it to a place that was hardcore nervous about it and everything was closed. So I freaked out. And I took a step back and I remember I was going for a walk and I was just really thinking about like, how am I going to get back into business? I wasn't, I wasn't even online. Like I wasn't on my Instagram. I was nowhere. And I get this call from Kelly. I'm like, Oh my God, I haven't talked to her in months. So I pick up the phone and she's got this bubbly voice. She's like, Hey, I just wanted to check in on you. And she noticed that I hadn't been online and she's like, I just wanted to see if you're okay. And we just, we're just talking and it was just, it was nice to just catch up. And then I realized I hung up the phone and I realized like, wow, First of all, she noticed, and first of all, and second of all, if she noticed and someone else is noticing that I'm not around, and people are looking to me, to you, for how we should react right now, and how we should be doing business or not doing business, or we have the right to do it how we want to. So if I wanted to take the rest of the month off, I very well could have. If I wanted yeah. to show up and service people the way I know how to do best, I absolutely can too but you just having that phone call just kind of reset my brand of like okay I'm here for a purpose I'm here for a mission like Kelly literally can't work right now because her salon is closed she can do other things but I can so I should be here so thank you for getting me a little bit out of my rut giving me that push back to to show up and I don't I don't know if you need that but you, you did no that. I didn't thank you yeah yeah because I I feel like that it happens you know, as independent business owners, women, emotional humans, like just as life flows, you have to be super authentic and vulnerable if you're going to share through your business, through social media, through everything, yeah. right? So it, it's a choice of what I, what I want to share, what's on brand. If I really just want to sit around and, and be mopey all day, because I'm allowed to do that one every once in a while, mm -hmm. I'll, you know, like we're allowed to do that. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. make, it shouldn't make it any more anxious or nerve wracking to jump back on and say, I'm back. Yeah. Now I needed the reset. Totally. It's an example of saying, I know myself and I yeah. know that I have to, step back and now it's time to step up yep exactly it's like giving your that yourself permission to everything we were just saying to take that step back and also your permission to take the step up yeah for sure love it I love so that. thank you again yeah <laughs> <laughs> So Kelly, what is coming up for you next? I think things are starting to open up a little bit and I'm sure that is going to be a little or drastically different for you at first, but just in general with your brand, your business, your entrepreneurship, what is coming up next for you? So I've been writing a lot. Love that. Tell us what uh, you're writing. Yeah. I'm like, I'm really loving creating connection between my real life and the stuff that people don't see. And then, you know, the things that people love most about me and appreciate about the voice that I do have. Mm -hmm. So connecting them through my real life blog is going to be really exciting throughout the rest of the year. Yeah. Yeah. I think that my business was based on intimate luxury. Yeah. So to take it to a new level because of what's going on and be able to elevate through this, I'm excited for it because I think I'm somebody who has the ability to convert faith into strength mm -hmm. to service women and their families during like extreme highs and lows before this happened. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it, it that is my greatest reward. Yeah. So I think knowing that even through this time, my business is growing. Um, I get to serve more than just a service, you know, it's, to be of service and create comfort for people from the inside out. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm excited for you to open up back up. I know I need a haircut. And guys, I don't know if you caught that. I live in Georgia and come to Jersey for my haircuts by Kelly. <laughs> but anyway, Kelly, thank you so much for sharing all your words of wisdom with us. I can't wait to read what's coming up for you on the blog. Is there any kind of last words of advice for our listeners to live their best and on brand life that you want to leave us with today? Um, so one of the things that I always is super simple that repeats on me from my very dear friend and colleague, Ted Gibson mm -hmm. is, you know, 
what you do is good because what you do is good. Mm. And when you believe that, you know, when you believe that what you're doing is good, that's all that matters because even if somebody doesn't like it or they don't understand it or it doesn't work out, it's going to then take you to the next place where you felt good about what you did anyway, and you're moving on to something else. So like having that confidence that what I do is good, because shit, what I do is good. <laughs> I think that's going to be my new morning mantra. <laughs> shit, what I do is good. <laughs> what I do is good. You know? I love like, that. Be for everybody. Yeah. But it's still good for me, and that's good enough. Mm-hmm. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Well, Kelly, thank you again for being here. Tell us where we can find you if we want to know more about you and your real life. Okay, so uh, my Instagram is R E E L style underscore beauty. Love it. And uh, my website is the same, realstylebeauty.com. So the blog is available. You log in, create an account. Uh, the blog is available there, so you can check it out. Cool. And I'm pretty accessible. So reach out and I'm love supporting others. Cool. And she definitely does love supporting others. I've had a few connections come my way because of knowing Kelly. So she's a good person to know. But anyway, yeah. Kelly, thanks so much for being here. And I can't wait to get back in the salon with you. Thank you.